All right, welcome everyone um, to our final webinar of 2016. Uh, this is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER. Can everyone hear me out there? Thank you. Just wanted to make sure. Um, we have a, a, a webinar near and dear to my heart and um, and also I think to many of you out there. Um, it, we often discuss uh, professional development for OER. And um, I am so pleased to have Cheryl Huff from Germana Community College in Virginia and Lisa Young from Scottsdale Community College in Arizona, both experts uh, in this area. Um, so I think we're really in for a treat this morning. I do have to warn you, um, there is construction going on <laughs> in, in, in the building around my office. So um, if you do hear some unusual sounds like a hammer going, I do apologize in advance for that. All right, as you know, um, we um, use the California Community College System uh, CCC Confer, uh, which is uh, a, their version of Blackboard Collaborate. And I think most of you are familiar with it. Um, and uh, we have a chat window. Uh, it will be in the lower left-hand corner um, of, your, of your window uh, with the participants list. You should see yourself on there. Please do use the chat window to uh, co uh, make comments or ask questions as we go along. We'll have a formal Q&A at the end of this. And um, I'd also like to ask you to introduce yourself in the chat window now, if you would uh, tell us uh, what college you're with and um, maybe uh, any OER interest that you might have. All right, our agenda today. Um, as usual, I will give you a very quick um, overview of the CCC OER. Um, and I do want to let you know, for those of you who um, haven't heard, we do have a new website. Um, and it is, um, I'll type that into the uh, chat window here. But we're really pleased to have a new website after quite a long time with our old one. It's cccoer.org. So I hope that's really easy for all of you to remember. And we'd love your feedback on it. And we'd love your contributions. It's really, it's a community of practice. Um, and so any, um, any materials that you want to share with the community at large around the OER work you do at your college we would be very happy to share. Um, and then uh, we're going to go directly to uh, our presenters. Um, and let me go ahead and introduce them right now. All right. So uh, the first uh, speaker I'd like to introduce is Cheryl Huff. She's a professor of humanities and English at Germana College in Virginia. But, the la but for the last several years, she has been the uh, shepherdess of OER uh, professional development um, in the Virginia Community College Consortium working on a project called V23 that she'll tell you more about. And then most recently this year, she has taken over the chair position of the Achieving the Dream OER degree program um, in the Virginia Community College Consortium. So uh, lots of experience with OER. Uh, Cheryl, you want to tell us a little bit about um, your work out in VCCS? Yes, hi. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Una, for inviting me. Um, we, uh, we've been working for quite a few years trying to scale OER. We're a diverse system. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later. But we do have the benefits of having some shared things, like we share a huge Blackboard subscription and a few other systems that make it a little bit easier for us to work as a shared system. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about what we did statewide for the last couple of years and how it was driven by professional development. And then I'll talk a tiny bit about what we're doing right at my college, Germana Community College. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. And next I'd like to introduce uh, Lisa Young, um, who has uh, presented with us um, quite a bit before. Um, she is the faculty director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Scottsdale Community College. She's also the co-chair of the Maricopa Millions OER project. And she's also um, one of the vice presidents on my advisory board who helps us plan our CPC OER activities. Lisa? 
Good morning, everybody, and good afternoon to those of you out east. Um, I'm really happy to be with you all today. And um, what we're going to talk about a bit is very similar to Cheryl, but a little bit of a different tack in that we haven't really been exploring the OER degree components. And we'll be, I'll be presenting on both the, what the individual colleges are doing as well as um, us as a district. Thank you, Lisa. So you can see that we're going to have a really wide variety of um, OER professional development to draw from there today. I'm just so thrilled to have both Lisa and Cheryl. All right. For those of you who are new to the Community College Consortium for OER, um, we've been around for almost a decade, uh, nine years. Um, and although uh, we're working um, quite closely with a number of colleges on OER degrees, we're also working with lots of colleges who are just getting started on OER adoption. And our mission really remains the same, uh, expanding access to high quality open materials. Uh, we do this by supporting uh, faculty and staff at the colleges who are um, doing the work. And ultimately, uh, we want to improve student success. And ultimately, uh, we want to increase student success. Um, if, you're, if you're out there on the phone, um, I'd ask you to hit the star six on the phone so that we don't get a bunch of feedback. Thank you. All right. Um, as you know, the um, Community College Consortium um, has many members, and, and I know a lot of you are online this morning. We have um, uh, members, over 250 colleges are members in 21 states and U.S. states and, California and Canadian provinces. And uh, we'd love to have you join us and support this, um, this national and North American uh, movement of community colleges adopting OER. So with, without much further ado, I want to get to uh, professional development for OER. Um, and I, you know, in talking with Cheryl and Lisa as we were planning this webinar, I was kind of trying to pull the, the thematic uh, threads together around what makes it, what makes a, success, a successful program, um, whether it's at your college or at your district or even at a system-wide level. And so the really key points that I took away from speaking with these two experts was. Um, really finding and creating a community of practice, uh, building, building that um, in, a, in a really open environment where um, all of your resources are shared and everyone is invited to participate um, where they can. So this is not just about faculty. It's not just about librarians. It's not just about instructional designers. not just about administrators. And not just about students, but about bringing everyone together uh, to work to make this successful. Funding is a key piece. Um, I think over time, you, you might start this initially, but I think at some point you'll be looking at funding some of this work. And it might be release time for faculty. Um, it might come in various forms, um, uh, chancellor innovation funds. It could be state or public uh, funds that are allocated to do this work. Um, and there's going to be a lot of professional development, uh, workshops, webinars, individual consultations, and a lot of online, online resources. We know that faculty, um, staff are very busy, and so providing resources for them that they can um, access um, whenever they're available is really key to that. And then how do you scale this up, you know, starting with a department level to a division to a college and finally to a consortium? So I think um, I know our speakers are going to are going to touch on. This. I hope that is helpful for you. So I am now going to turn this over to Cheryl Huff. Um, Cheryl, are you there? You may need to turn your your uh, microphone on. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Carol. Oh, good. Sorry. 
Um, yes, hi. Thanks again for joining us today. If you're uh, at least part-time, fac partly faculty like I am, you know that this is a really crazy time in the semester and we're grading and tweaking finals and prepping students and holding hands. So uh, I appreciate all of you coming. I wondered if you could just do a, a quick hand raise in the, um, in the box to the left and let me know if you're currently involved in any professional development at your college at this point. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow, okay, great. I, I see at least 18 hands. 18 hands? Oh, you're recording, okay. Um, wow, okay, so you are definitely my people, and I appreciate you coming. I'm one of those uh, faculty who just keeps drifting off into exciting new adventures in the unknown, maybe because I got into this a little bit late in life, and I find so much of it so interesting and exciting. Um, so what I'd like to do today is just give you an overview of what we've accomplished in Virginia as a statewide system, as well as in my college, um, and how professional development was really intrinsic to everything that we did and everything that we planned to do. Um, so I'll be describing a little bit of what this system's like and how we work with our people. So I'd like you to meet the Virginia Community College System. I'm going to tell you what we've done in OER, and then I'm going to evaluate what we've done with you and what we plan to do, and see how that, that relates to what you are doing at your school. And I'm hoping we have a really ro robust Q&A so we can talk about that. So that's the state of Virginia, great big triangle. You can see that we reach all the way from the Chesapeake Bay and the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, all the way to under West Virginia on top of Tennessee. So we are a very diverse system. We have mountains all the way down the side, and we have water to the right. Northern Virginia, at the very top of that triangle, is the Washington, D.C. suburb. In fact, in uh, Fredericksburg, where I am, we're 50 miles from D.C., so we're also considered a suburb of Washington. But if you go to the west of our service area, you're up in the mountains, and it's a very different environment. So we're a very diverse and exciting state to be a part of. So this is a quick graphic about what the system has in terms of impact. Uh, I'm not going to read it to you, but you can see roughly what our student population is like. Probably pretty typical. Probably compares pretty closely to your community colleges uh, in your state. So we have a tremendous impact. We're constantly working, especially in the poorer, less served parts of the state to prepare our students for either transfer or to go out into the workforce. So a couple of years back, Richard Sebastian, who was then the director of technology at the VCCS, it was a brand new position. And one of his first priorities was to review how much our students were spending for textbooks and how we could alleviate those expenses for them so they'd be more likely to persist and succeed. That coincided with the chancellor creating an initiative called Complete 2021, which the goal is to have three times as many uh, credentials as by 2021 than we have been having. So it's an ambitious goal, but a big part of it can be helped with OER. So a key component of that was that we make some changes and make it more affordable for our students to go to school. This is very near and dear to our chancellor, who was a community college student, who was a first generation uh, community college student who, who didn't have enough money for textbooks his first semester. So he's a big supporter. So he created some grant funding. And the grant funding was exciting because it brought people together in a collaboration, the very first big fund that wasn't just for individuals at individual colleges. Um, those grants were to create a degree, a gen ed degree. So he funded the development of the 12 highest enrollment courses for, uh, for the degree. They brought in people from all over the state. And this is where we began our relationship with Lumen, by and large, and coinciding with Tidewater creating their 
B degree program. There also are also VCCS professional development workshop grants. Now, you have to, we have to apply for these individually um, and work with our own admins, but they're awarded by the system office, and they can be for any kind of professional development. So several of us got these grants to work on OER workshops. Um, the only caveat of getting them is that you have to open up your events to everybody across the system, but of course, that's terrific because then you get to meet people from other colleges doing things that are similar. So the OER grant project led to the Z23 grant project. The Z23 grant project was funded um, by the Hewlett Foundation. Richard Sebastian got a $200,000 grant, and our chancellor matched it with his office funds. And we worked with uh, 16 of the 23 colleges, so I'll be talking a little bit more about that. And then, of course, that led to achieving the dream degree initiative, which is what we're working on now, and I suspect a lot of you are as well. So first we had pioneers. I like to think of people who start off in things like distance learning and now OER as the pioneers who sort of go out there and start the process, and then a lot of us follow along behind. Um, so Tidewater Community College, which is in our system, it's down in Virginia Beach here in Virginia. It's the second biggest community college in the system. That, they started a business management degree that was a completely open Z degree, requiring zero textbooks. So that's why they coined the phrase Z degree, for zero textbook cost. And it literally is zero textbook cost. And that's been running for about two years. Um, North Virginia created at their Extended Learning Institute, which is where all the distance learning courses come out of at NOVA. NOVA is the largest, so very close to Washington, D.C. and scattered across the top of the state. They created a Z degree, a gen ed Z degree, but fully online, so students would have had to take the courses completely online. And Reynolds, which is in the heart of Richmond, created a Z degree for gen ed working with their dual enrollment faculty. If any of you have worked with dual enrollment, on a, in a department, you know that sometimes it's hard to coordinate textbooks. Very often high schools have textbooks that are out of date compared to what we're using, the latest editions on campus, and there wasn't much we could do about that. So creating completely OER courses means that the dual enrollment students and, and instructors are on the same materials that we are on on campus, and we can prove to facts that it's equivalent. The New River Community College created this very fun uh, resource. It's a, called OTIS, the Open Text Initiative System. And what it, was, what it is, is a repository for um, OER. So these were the early Z degrees, and they all came out of system funding, college funding, individual faculty applying for workshop grants and creating things and sharing them. So professional development opportunities grew out of this. So next came along the settlers, uh, the 16 Z23 teams. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about that, but just to give you an overview, there were 16 colleges involved. Each had a team creating at least 12 fully OER courses that would lead to a Z degree, and we had a year to work on that. Matthew and Libby Watts created, they're both math faculty at Tidewater. They created statewide training for math faculty to learn about MyOpen Math. They got a grant to do this, and they went around all over the state and gave work, open workshops, very hands-on. And then faculty became engaged via word of mouth and Lumen webinars. The word started to spread last summer. Well, no, sorry, not this last summer, the summer before when we kicked off the Z23 degree. Um, people really came along uh, and heard about it and wanted to be part of it and contacted us. So we spent a lot of time interfacing with uh, individual faculty, but also making collaborations of faculty. And then each of the individual, individual colleges and regional centers and BCCS peer groups have been working on creating professional development for faculty, librarians, and the various uh, instructional designer positions. So the Z23 grant project, you can see it reached all the way across the state. And there were six different degrees that were mostly built, some built fully, others almost built, almost completed after the two semesters, fall and spring, 2015, 2016. Um, 
business administration, business management, criminal justice, gen ed, liberal arts, and social science. Um, some of these built off of previous work, the liberal arts degree that NOVA was working on built on top of OER courses they already had built previously. And the liberal arts degree, um, the uh, social science degree at Reynolds was building on top of their gen ed degree. They had so many gen ed courses already built at OER from their previous Chancellor's Innovation Fund grant that they were able to create a, a social science uh, degree from that. And then, of course, a lot of this work and training is now kicking off the Achieving the Dream grant work that we're doing at six of our colleges. So one of the ways we started our professional development for Z23, one of the biggest, um, highest impact things that we did was to hold webinars, just like the one we're in right now, um, mostly in Blackboard Collaborate. We recorded them. We shared them via a blog that we have. You can see the graphic there, so it's the edtech.vccs blog where we stored all the um, webinars. Um, we began the webinars with by subject. So in other words, we had one for English. I think that was the largest attended one. So we talked about composition classes and a little bit about literature. We had them for biology. We had them for Spanish. We had them for history. Um, anything that anybody was interested in creating we held a webinar on it and they were very sort of hands-on very workaday not um, not theoretical just sort of here's how you adopt and adapt and build OER materials and OER courses to lead to uh -huh. degrees so I like to think of what we've been doing as both really broad and really deep um, when the Z23 grant project when everybody was awarded their grant we did an immediate onboarding with the whole team. And sometimes it was virtual, and sometimes I actually drove to the campus and worked with the team. So everybody was given access to shared resources. What we created was a massive spreadsheet for all 16 colleges. They each had their own page, and then everything aggregated to a main page. So everybody could see what everybody else was doing and building and could immediately form collaboration so that we could then have professional development for those people, for those specific courses. Sometimes people need the big picture, and sometimes they really need hands-on help to do really deliberate things in very specific ways in courses. Like, they just need to understand how to build an assessment, or they just need to know how to embed the kind of videos that walk their students through activities. So by having a really shared conversation and collaborating across all 16 schools, uh, and I was literally driving all over the state, visiting each team, working with them. And professional development could be focused, or it could be much, much broader, bringing in other people. Tidewater Community College created a course called Pathways, and I'll show you a little bit about that. So we did these discipline-specific webinars. I did face-to-face -face workshops at all of the Z23 colleges. And they also did, we have regional centers for teaching excellence with three or four of our colleges by region having their own center for teaching excellence. And that's funded by the DCCS, by the system office. And so I went to each one of those and presented and did workshops at all five of the regional centers. Um, we also have peer groups in Virginia. I don't know if any of you have that as well across your state. The peer groups are typically by discipline. But a couple of years ago, we created a distance learning peer group that is cross-discipline. And we decided we could do the same with OER. So we created an OER peer group, and we had our first meeting last spring. So that was like a 24-hour way of <laughs> being in a room together and creating um, any kind of OER training or professional development or theory. Or we, we just made a huge amount of contacts with one another. We had a big town hall meeting too, which was exciting because I think we had about 150 people there. And we got to um, have a panel talk about the excitement. And now we have, the, of course, the Achieving the Dream and Lumen collaborations that we're all working. We're working with colleges all around the country now. So this was actually one of our key ways of reaching the most amount of faculty with instant training. So the first summer of the Z23 grant project, 2015 in the summer, I offered 
uh, and into the fall, Linda Williams from Tidewater taught two sections. Um, typically, the librarians teach the Pathways course at Tidewater and at some of the other colleges. And it works out very well. Um, they're perfect for that. This is a fully online course, so nobody ever has to show up anywhere. So anybody can take it from anywhere in the state, and they did, in fact. Um, and it walks people through everything they basically need to know. And you can see this course. I put the link in there. Um, Lumen has this in their public catalog right from the Lumen homepage, lumenlearning.com. And you can go in there and see. This was designed by Linda Williams again. Um, and we've all taken it. And it, of course, it's completely open. I made my sections. I did three sections late summer into fall. And I made them very self-paced rather than having a module per week or a module due every two weeks. I just kind of made it self-paced, and that worked out really well for faculty. A lot of them couldn't really focus on it or work on it until Christmas break, but then they all got in there and they worked like crazy. So this really prepares people. But we want to take this to the next level. We want to keep, um, we want to keep bringing people into this because it's really a great place to start. But then the next step is for people who've already moved past this, so we need kind of a 2.0. You need a 200 level and a 300 level. <laughs> the very last part of the Pathways course is, is really terrific. Um, it, it's the 6.5 module, now what? This really tells people what they can be doing next as they move through Pathways, where they can go with it. And I think it's one of the best ways to keep people in the process. I know with some of the distance learning professional development that we did, people would take the course, get the certificate, and then kind of disappear. So we wanted at the end of this Pathways course to have direct suggestions as to how they could be continuing to be part of the conversation and be part of the professional development. Even though they finished this, there's still so much to do and to learn. And we linked all this to the blog that we keep at the DCCS. So things have changed a little bit. Last two summers ago when we were starting the Z23 grant, we were talking about adopting, adapting, and building. And then what's come about is a, another way of looking at it. And this came out of some of the Achieving the Dream conversation. And instead, adopt, blend, customize, and develop. It makes it a little cuter because it's ABCD. So, so all of this is going to continue to happen. Um, we constantly keep asking people, where, do you, where are you and where do you need to go? And then we can help you directly. Um, we continue to work with the system peer groups, all the different colleges, even the ones that are not part of Achieving the Dream, we're pulling them in. We wrote that into our Achieving the Dream grant that any time we did professional development at any of our any of the six schools that are part of the consortium, we would invite the schools who don't who are not in the grant but still are interested in where we are. So this is what we do in terms of networking. We feel like we're constantly building the network through professional development and through uh, collaboration. So these are things that we're hoping to do. This is for the Achieving the Dream. We're offering the pathways at individual colleges, but we also want to offer it system-wide and make it a transferable credential. Um, regional workshops, I'm continuing to present at regional workshops uh, along with some of my colleagues. And th those are very hands-on for exactly what people need. Uh, the consortium itself is offering specific workshops among ourselves. Uh, we're beginning work on a couple of the major courses that we know have to happen for our various degrees. So now some of the things that we'd like to see, the wish list, developmental ed, uh, the dual enrollment program for some of the benefits I mentioned earlier, and then the ESL program. I have a special interest in this because my husband teaches the ESL for Germana, and he's created completely OER courses. And saving the money and having uh, the ability to be really nimble about what you offer, because every semester the students are different with different needs, like developmental and dual enrollment. So that's basically my, uh, my sharing. Um, we are working on professional development in terms of uh, the system-wide, our college-wide, our consortium-wide. We are lucky enough to have this Achieving the Dream funding for three years. Three years feels extremely luxurious, but it's going by very quickly. And so we have workshops planned. I'm doing one for just my own, my very own English department in January. 
um, and that will be in a computer lab, and it will be extremely hands-on, direct course mapping, and uh, real sharing of resources. Uh, but then I'll continue to do things on the statewide level as well. So I will hand this over to Lisa. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, this is Una. I just had a quick question for you. So um, at Germana College, and I'm sorry if I missed this, but um, at Germana College, um, how is OER a professional development done? Um, is it, it, it sounds like departments might be in charge of it individually, or is, is there a college-wide um, uh, movement around that? Uh, through, Previously, uh, well, Germana was a Z20. Germana was a Z23 college, so all the professional development that we were doing for Z23 was taking place at Germana as well. Um, we had uh, 14 people working on 12 different courses, so they all took the Pathways course. So now we're building on that with Achieving the Dream at Germana, but we are all actively, uh, we're doing it across the college. I've, pre I've presented uh, along with my, with my Achieving the Dream team, we presented our, at our College Learning Day and had faculty come to that. We also have um, presented at faculty meetings. And now we're beginning to hold workshops. We're focusing the workshops now at Germana much more on specific courses that need to be developed, collaborative teams, okay. and professional development for that. Thank you. Thank you for, yeah, for um, clarifying that. That's, that's helpful. All right. Wow. That was amazing. Uh, thanks so much to Cheryl for uh, um, telling us all about that journey. Um, uh, in um, not only at Germana but uh, throughout the state of Virginia um, in their community college system. And uh, yes, now I would like to turn it over to Lisa Young, um, who is going to tell us about her work um, at the Maricopa Community College District. Lisa? Hello, everybody. Um, I have been having a sneeze attack the whole webinar, so if I suddenly disappear, it's just because I'm sneezing and I'll be right back. Um, but I'm so happy to be here with you all and um, have the opportunity to share what we're doing at the Maricopa Community Colleges as well as some of our, um, as a district, as well as at some of our colleges. And so the objectives that I put together for my portion are really to look at, provide a brief overview of the Maricopa Community Colleges and the Maricopa Millions Project to discuss our faculty development model for open educational resources and to share some tools and resources that we're happy to share with you. They have a Creative Commons license and you can make your own however you want to do that. So um, in terms of Maricopa, we're about the same size as um, Virginia in regard to the number of students that we serve. We serve about 265,000 students um, across Maricopa County. And we have a number of colleges. We have 10 individually accredited colleges um, and two skills centers. Um, we have a number of degrees and certificates um, available to our students for them to earn. And we have just under 10,000 employee, uh, employees and of those employees, we have just over 5,000 adjunct faculty and about 1,500 residential faculty. Um, so we're, we've got a lot of moving parts and a lot of people and um, courses really to impact. We have 981 unique courses within our course bank. So there is a lot of potential for what OER can do for our students in you know, making sure they have access to their materials and saving them money on the um, cost of their education. And we're really excited about the full potential that we have. Um, the Maricopa Millions Project is um, in its fourth year. Our goal was to save students $5 million in five years. Um, we did that in just over three years. Um, our savings to date are $7.5 million, just over $7.5 million. And we count no cost and low cost. So our model is that um, if a course uses open educational resources, um, and um, that, that is no cost, or if they have no cost or no textbooks, um, that is a no cost. And then low cost is less than $40. And we came up with that number by um, polling our students and asking them what they think um, low cost materials would be, what they're willing to pay for their course materials. So that's where we, um, how we 
we've developed those fun, those cost savings. Um, we are very conservative in looking at a course size of 20 students, and we use pretty much the norm of $100 per textbook in our calculations. And that's how we came up with those funds. And we've done this a number of different ways. Um, we really um, have worked to increase awareness of open educational resources, um, and we also su support um, faculty adopting, creating, and sharing their materials. And we do this through a number of grants as well as um, faculty development program. And um, that faculty development program looks like this, where it really um, has four components. The first is increasing awareness. The second is really getting into the nuts and bolts of OER, you know, Creative Commons licensing, mixing licensing th licenses, things like that, um, how to find OER, and finally, creating and adapting OER courses, really that reuse, remix, revise, and create um, and share. And so that in a nutshell, is what our faculty development program looks like and the different components. And how we do this um, happens both at the campus level and at the district level. So the Maricopa Millions Project has a steering team representative of all of the different colleges, and we work with those colleges to do programming at the colleges, but also we work on district-wide programming that can impact all faculty at all 10 colleges. And so when we look at the awareness component, um, there's a number of ways that we've done that. And um, first of all, there's brochures. We send out surveys. We send out brochures. We try to just get the word out about um, what open educational resources are, um, what Creative Commons it, it licensing is, how to find and use them. And so this is a, an example of a brochure that was created by the OER committee at Scottsdale Community College. So it's a group of faculty um, who wanted to put this information and presented this at our all faculty meeting a couple years ago. And um, things like this are happening at all of the campus um, campuses where they're trying to get that word out and share their um, resources. So this is faculty developed and faculty shared. Um, like Cheryl mentioned, we also do a lot of targeted visit visits. Um, yes, the, the brochure is Creative Commons licensed, and I will get that out to you all. I'm going to make a note because I saw that. And you can totally make it your own, CC BY. Um, so with targeted visits, we, visits, we um, do a number of things. We look at division and department meetings. So we, we like to take a look at it from the discipline perspective. Um, we've done that a great deal with math as well as English. Um, math was really the first subject to really kick off with the early adopters um, for OER within the district. And then English was the first. Um, English 101 and English 102 were the first courses to be funded with Maricopa Millions. And we really have been working on getting those materials adopted by other faculty. And we've been really working with them. Um, so getting those division department meetings. And what's really interesting is that when I was doing our calculations for um, the savings this year, um, our, our partner, Paul Golish, who's no longer at the Maricopa Community College, has used to do that. And so now I got to data mine the schedule. And um, what was really interesting is that we have one college that has really only had two departments um, that they've really targeted for OER, but they had the most savings. And so these division department meetings and adoptions are really key to um, helping our students get access to the OER and having those um, core savings. Um, in terms of, um, we work individually with faculty. If someone approaches those of us on the OER steering team, we work, if, and they want to do something outside of our grants program, we certainly meet with them. Um, and we also sometimes target faculty um, if we find a great resource that we might want them and want to show them. We'll go ahead and reach out to them and say, hey, we found the perfect resource that might work for you. Um, let's talk and let me, show, let me show you. And then again, those specific disciplines. Um, and one of the things that I think is most fun to plan are our 
Maricopa-wide dialogue days. And we have one per year um, where we usually bring in um, a guest speaker or a guest speakers and we design a um, full day of learning around open educational resources. So last February we brought in um, David Wiley and we had our day about open pedagogy. He did a great job of engaging our faculty and really getting them to think about the whole concept of open pedagogy and then and um, in the afternoon, we well, then we had a panel um, so that faculty who have used OER could share their experiences. Um, and then in the afternoon, we do the discipline-specific open um, breakouts where faculty um, are able to share what they have created and hoping to get other faculty across the district to adopt them. So you'll see that we had an English and reading breakout and a science breakout. And those were really successful in really getting the concept of um, this is what I've done. You can take this, make it your own, and use it, and then share it. And so really getting to those five R's and helping our faculty um, have a starting point. And a little later in the presentation, I'll share about what we're going to do to take that even further um, now that we've tried that out. And we are going to have our next um, dialogue day, um, which is going to be around the OER degree. And we're really excited to have um, Preston Davis be our guest um, speaker. So we can't wait to have you out here and get away from the cold, Preston. So the second component is really the nuts and bolts and the ins and outs of what OER is, the Creative Commons licensing, how to mix licenses, what is, um, what about copyright, all of those kind of things. And um, Matthew Bloom, who has presented a webinar in the past for CCC OER, has created um, a MOOC and posted it on the Canvas network. And so it's open to anyone who wants to use it. And if you'd like a copy of it to make your own, we certainly can provide that as well. And um, you can clearly see the objectives, um, but this is a great way for us to, for someone who get, is interested in OER and wants to know more, we share um, this to with uh, with those faculty, and so we're just like, hey, here you go, get started with this. Come back to us if there if you have any questions. So we share this resource with anyone who gets our grants, as well as anyone who is just interested in learning more about open educational resources. And, and we also do this in not only in the MOOC, but Matthew also facilitates this a little bit further um, where we have facilitated sessions of the MOOC where he adds additional objectives and hands-on time um, with our faculty. So beyond the nuts and bolts, you know, that we've, we've created awareness, we've gotten our faculty interested in OER, they've learned about Creative Commons licensing and what open really is, um, and then they're like, hey, help me, how do I find OER? And of course we want to do that as well, and so um, we do have facilitated workshops, and um, these are available to the district, um, so any faculty member in the district is welcome to attend these. We have these at least once per year, so these are in the fall semester, and then in the spring semester we have the dialogue day. These facilitated workshops are much smaller, usually 20 to 25 um, faculty um, in a computer lab so they can roll up their sleeves and have get gain assistance in searching for um, OER, while the dialogue days are usually 80 to 120 faculty coming together um, so that we can, um, you know, have a dialogue um, as opposed to the hands-on workshop component. So this is just a great way for our faculty to start learning and finding their OER. And that's at the district level. And at the campus level, each campus does something a little different. And I really wanted to feature this program, the eVenture program from Mesa Community College. Um, they're from their Center for Teaching and Learning. And so they have this opportunity where faculty get involved in professional development projects. They learn about it. And they cultivate a sense of community and work together. And they have a number of different areas of specializations that faculty can select from universal design, hybrid course design, quality matters, the flip classroom, building learning communities, and OER. And then they work with and consult with members of their CTL. And this is an action research project. So they learn about OER and the many possibilities 
aligned with OER or offered through the use of OER, and then they start to put it into action in the course. And this would be where they realize, wow, there isn't a resource for me to teach these course competencies or, or learning objectives, or wow, I really need this. And then we're able to leverage that, um, the, the faculty are able to leverage that and apply for a Maricopa Millions grant to do that work. And so at the college level, these programs are really exciting because they allow for that development. And of course, there are a number of individual consultations. Um, nine of the 10 um, community colleges within the Maricopa Community College District have centers for teaching and learning, or something named similarly. Um, and faculty are more than welcome to come in at any time and work with our CTL staffs at those colleges, as well as our faculty librarians. And um, that really provides a great opportunity for the faculty to get more information. And um, these are both at the Maricopa Millions level and the campus. So they can, of course, go to their campus. And if, there is, they, if the campuses get stumped, then they're welcome to come to myself and my, and my co-chair and members of the OER steering team. Um, for assistance in finding OER as well. So there's a number of different ways that we support our faculty. We never want them to be out there thinking, oh, there's no resources for me. So we've really worked to make sure that they have a number of different both human resources as well as reference resources um, for, have, for creating those OER or finding OER. Excuse me. Um, and then in terms of creating OER, um, we also offer a number of individual consultations. So um, they can be on instructional design or any component of OER training. Um, and one of the things that we do for the Maricopa Millions grant is we get status updates on a monthly basis from each of our teams who are awarded a Maricopa Millions grant. And in that status, we specifically ask, is there anything you're hung up on? Is there anything you need help with? And then we strategize to make sure that we can provide that just-in-time training for any issues that they may have. Um, so they can get assistance in either one of those components, instructional design or any component of OER, as well as having the librarians who are amazing resources. And I wanted to share with you um, one of the tools that um, Donna Gaudet, um, now Donna Slaughter, and I had developed specifically for a workshop. And this is something that we use now um, with um, OER as, at the Maricopa Millions level as well at Scottsdale Community College where I teach. And this is um, a, it's a three-page worksheet. And I provided the link at the bottom. So if you want to use this, modify it, make it your own, uh, please do. Um, but we really want the faculty to look at what they have and what they need and what they might need to transform in regard to or in regard to moving their course to an Creative Commons licensed format. So we encourage them to take it from the learning objective and then almost use the ADDIE model in regard to, you know, first looking at what do you have in terms of assessments, what are your techniques, do you have it in a Creative Commons format? If you do, What's the reference or attribution? And what learning objective or cross competency are they you know, aligned with? And so we really want them to start thinking about, OK, these are the components that I have in my OER or in my regular course. What can I use? And wow, I have this great resource, but I have no idea where I got it. And I don't know if it is in a Creative Commons format or who created it. And so we really want them to start thinking about that. Again, with instructional materials, we want them to identify what they have and whether it's in Creative Commons um, format or and who, who they're going to attribute. Um, we think that's really key. And then we want them to start thinking about what they might need. So they've looked at what do they have. Now might they, what might they need? Is it something that they've already got that needs to be modified, or they need to reach out to someone to see if it's Creative Commons license, so on and so forth, and keeping track of those attributions. And then um, what they'll need to create. So this is one of the first tools that we look at, um, that we work with our faculty, so that they're looking at those learning objectives and, learn, and, and taking inventory of what they have. And then. Our third page is really just keeping track of the attributions because one of the areas that I've found that faculty don't think about is their PowerPoint slides or if they're using something like that or if they've, if they've narrated them. And they may have all of these images that they've 
compiled over the years. And some of them might be from publisher materials from this book they used 10 years ago. And some of them are from a colleague and so on and so forth. So we really want them, as they start to develop and um, modify their materials, to really keep track of those images. And so we have them put their image, how and where it's being used, and then the attribution, as well as the link, so that then they can pull that all together. Um, if they're not doing it, if they're not quite sure when they're going to use it, they can always go back and be like, oh, I had this image of this, and um, I'm going to use it here, and I can provide the attribution. So. Um, that is a worksheet that you're more than welcome to use and modify. And if you modify it and make it better, I'd love to see what you did, because we always want to make things better. Um, we also do discipline-specific um, facilitated workshops. This is a um, specifically for math. Math AS is also my open math. We call it Math AS. I've asked our math faculty what AS stands for, and we couldn't come up with it. So. It's an FAS. But this was a district-wide um, look at how we were able to um, bring in David Lippman and do some you know, in-depth math AS training for faculty across the district. And um, we also have college-specific programs. So at SCC, we have our new textbook free degree. And with that, um, we each semester, we identify the faculty who will be um, working on those courses that have been identified for the OER degree. And we meet monthly as a team. And we do OER training. We look at how things are going in their work to convert their course to an OER and hybrid course. So it's OER and hybrid program. And work with them for that. And then we also do individual consultations, um, our PTL staff with the individual faculty as they're working on different projects if they get hung up or if they just want some instructional design help or if we work with them to search for different materials. Um, so that's a college-specific program that we've been working on. Um, and now we're moving into the open pedagogy workshop. So last February, we brought in um, David Wiley to talk about it. Now we're delivering um, open pedagogy workshops to help our faculty um, consider the use of um, you know, working with their students and having them engaging in that open pedagogy model. And so this is an example of um, what we've come up with. And of course, you know, our, our OER workshops, um, our materials, our Creative Commons license, and of course, we'd be more than happy to share them. And so finally, um, in terms of what I dream for a faculty development, um, I really dream of a way to have an OER institute or OER academy within the district. I think that would be an amazing way to do some really in-depth work with our faculty and also do some scholarship of teaching and learning around OER. And then in terms of finding OER, that finding OER component, um, we're going to start um, moving into using Canvas Commons. But I still dream that we would have some kind of great metadata and way that we could cross-reference all of the OER across platforms and institutions so it would be easier for our faculty to search for OER. And that's what I got. Great. Thanks, Thanks so much. Um, Lisa, um, that was that was an amazing presentation, and as you may be able to tell, there's been a lot going on in the chat window too. So it's a uh, uh, great great back channel work as well. Um, so I want to open this up to questions, and I've been tracking some of them, and I think um, probably Cheryl uh, has, and uh, Lisa will give you a chance to look in the chat window and see some things. Uh, one question that came up early on, and I'm going to just uh, put it out there, uh, was how are people sharing their OER courses? And we had a number of people respond. Cheryl, of course, spoke about the fact that the Virginia Community College System uses Blackboard, and so they share a lot through Blackboard. Um, and I believe uh, Lisa mentioned that Maricopa uses Canvas, and I believe that's throughout um, almost all of their colleges as well. Um, and so that's another option. Um, also, Lumen Learning um, it, um, has a repository of OER courses. They are a, um, they are a company that uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with um, and that we work with closely. Uh, they, pr they produce OER courses. Colleges can contract with them to access uh, those courses through their, um, through their own LMS. Um, and Regina Gong uh, 
also from uh, I'm sorry from Lansing Community College. She's the OER project manager there. And she mentioned that uh, the state of Michigan has an OER hub where they have a curated list of OER content. I don't think it's courses, but it's um, textbooks and other um, OER. Um, and Cheryl and Lisa, would you like to add to that? Yeah, hi, I'll jump in. Um, this has been one of the greatest challenges across the state, and I would love to say that we solved this problem, but we really haven't. I went to a, a summit of the whole um, BCCS last Friday at the system office with uh, Jenny Quarles, who is the new Richard Sebastian at the BCCS. And we still have an issue with sharing courses without much friction. We did create. Um, during the Z23 grant project, Lumen worked with our Blackboard admin people, and we built an OER courses tab that built in access for all faculty. At the top of your Blackboard homepage, there's a series of tabs, and one of them was said just said OER. If you go in there and access some of the courses, now the process of getting courses into that tab. Uh, and having them updated and available, that was a little bit clunky and continues to be challenging. Um, so a lot of what's happening is just uh, much of what Lumen has in their catalog has already been designed by schools like Nova, Nova Eli, where Preston is. Uh, a lot of the courses in there are from them. A lot of the courses are from Tidewater. A lot of the courses are just from all 16 schools that were part of Z23. So Lumen is basically housing our courses for us. And some of them we can get directly through Blackboard. Other courses we go through Lumen. And Lumen, uh, Lumen's LTI for their courses can pop into Canvas, it can pop into Blackboard. It's just like importing publishers' materials. You just open a zip file and pop it in your course. So that's, that's what we're doing, but is it working beautifully yet? Not yet. But getting there. Uh, Lisa, did you want to add something about getting there. Maricopa as well? Yeah, we're really challenged with this. We just turned on Canvas Commons, so we haven't used it yet and haven't encouraged anyone to use it. So right now, um, all of our um, Maricopa Million supported resource OER are linked inside of our main Canvas page. So we definitely, this is an area that we definitely need to improve upon in terms of being able to share the great work that our faculty have done in pulling together OER for these courses. All right. Thank you, Lisa. And Christy Fierro um, at Tacoma Community College uh, mentioned that they uh, will be using Canvas Commons as well and OER Commons. Um, so it looks like that a lot of folks are investigating that and moving in that direction. So that's good input for us um, as we do our planning for next year's webinars. We may be able to uh, uh, get some more information on that for everybody. Um, I do you know. Trying to see if we had other questions. Go ahead. Hi, this is Christy. One other quick note on that that I think is really cool is a lot of the LMSs used to have proprietary file types, and Canvas moved over to what's called a common cartridge, and I've tested it. And if you go into Canvas Commons and download a course to move into Blackboard, I haven't had any problems of moving it between LMSs. So that's another point that not only can you access it even if you're not Canvas, that it usually downloads pretty seamlessly. Okay, that's great to hear too. So if people, if there's potentially movement between um, LMS and Canvas Commons, seems to be providing the cartridge, the common cartridge now. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so Debbie asks, will we be notified by the listserv when these courses go to Canvas? Well, Debbie, that, you know, not specifically, um, but we will be sharing additional information on um, OER development platforms. Um, we do from time to time, you know, share vendor information, but that's not specifically uh, what we do. It's more what our colleges are doing, and then we share around that. But um, I, I know there's a lot of interest in this area, so we'll be sharing more information. Um, and I want to see if there's any, I may have missed some earlier questions. Uh, we've had a wonderful uh, chat um, chat going on here. Um, 
Carol or Lisa, would you like to um, address any of the issues that came up in the chat window and just uh, articulate it um, before we sign off here? Well, no, I saw um, there were just I, a couple of questions that I wanted, to, that I wanted um, some um, clarification. And so I just wanted to clarify that um, our dialogue days are district-wide. And most of the workshops that I shared um, are district-wide, although we do have campus-specific um, ones as well. And then there was a question about our savings. And our savings are based on $100 per textbook. And we only account for the top 25 enrollment courses. So there's a lot of courses that are not in those top 25. So our savings could be substantially higher, but we only look at those courses. Okay, thank you for that, Lisa. Um, one question that came up earlier was from a number of people, uh, at least two I, I saw, who mentioned that they don't have all of these resources that uh, Lisa and Cheryl have developed over time. And so I, I did want to point you to the Community College Consortium for OER's website, cccoer.org, and maybe someone will pop that in the uh, chat window right now. Um, it's a good place to start getting resources. Um, we redid our website so that it really kind of spans uh, from very introductory uh, OER to the more advanced OER degrees. And we're going to continue to build that over time. So um, and thank you, Kiri, uh, another one of our vice presidents on, uh, on our advisory board for putting that in, and Quill. So uh, this is a place to share. We're a community of practice, and, and we want to make um, all of our colleges successful um, with their OER adoption. Um, and Cheryl, I wanted to give you the last uh, chance here. Do you have anything you'd like to uh, share with us before we sign off? Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw the, a few comments too about the lack of resources. And I actually started uh, a, a conference presentation about OER with "Just Start Somewhere." That was the theme of my um, my presentation, and that was a few years ago because. That is really how it is. You just have to you just have to go from where you are as an organization and do things like look at CCC OER resources and come to these webinars and ask a lot of questions and network like crazy. Um, anybody's welcome to email me, chuff at germana.edu. It's very easy. Um, and just be part of the conversation. And it, it, we always discover that even within our North 23 colleges, some of the schools are just on the brink. Some are way out there with Z degrees, like Tidewater and other. Of course, the big schools with the most money are always out there ahead of time. But they're always willing to share. So being part of, oh, I see, and you have a stay in the loop slide. So that's a great resource. So thank you all for coming. Yeah, th thank you, Cheryl. And I absolutely agree uh, with her about joining a community, um, getting involved. Um, in, in all of these amazing different options. Um, attending conferences when you can can be really powerful as well. I mentioned just a couple of here on a couple of them here on the slide. Um, and on our new website we also have a get involved where we're um, sharing all the spring conferences uh, that have open education um, themes associated with them. So do do check that out. Uh, we have a big event online event in the end of March called Open Education Week. Uh, where we get to share um, the work we're doing and hear from everyone else. And um, our webinars will restart in early February. And our first one is scheduled to be on authoring tools and platforms. So thank you for all the questions about how to share <laughs> OER courses. We will definitely bring that back into our planning and make sure that that webinar addresses um, some of that uh, concern, because it's, it's a big one. And so thank you, <clears throat> thank you all for coming today. And thanks so much to Cheryl and Lisa for sharing these amazing programs and giving us all of these ideas for how to bring this back to our colleges. And I want to say happy holidays to everyone. And we will see you in January. Great. Thank you.